I am Brendan Bannon, and I have just returned from southern Sudan, right beside the Congolese border, where I was photographing a relatively unknown crisis. The rebel group, the Lord's Resistance Army, or the LRA, have been attacking villages, killing people, kidnapping children in the northeast of Congo, and also within Sudan. Following a military offensive against them, the LRA attacks intensified against civilians. Tens of thousands of refugees thus fled and crossed from Congo to southern Sudan. There are also thousands of displaced Sudanese. The area is filled with fear and filled with tension. Most of the people that I saw who had sought refuge had a real look of trauma on their faces and in their eyes and in the way that they held themselves. You could just see it. People there are really worried. When you're on the road, you see people traveling by foot or by motorcycle with spears in their hands or bows and arrows on their backs. And this isn't common, this is exceptional. And it's happening this way because people are scared of when the next attack will hit. Throughout the area, towns and villages are constantly being attacked by rebels. And these incredible, brutal attacks don't make the news. They should, because what's happening there is a catastrophe for these people. There are scores of people who have been kidnapped. There are families that have been completely ripped apart. Family members abducted and enslaved. In the small villages surrounding Yambio, there were always reports of attacks. Every day I would hear that people had been captured the day before. I also heard first-hand reports of people being killed. There seemed to always be refugees arriving from Congo. Around Yambio, MSF is supporting the communities with mobile health clinics. They're also providing medicine and other support for local health structures in South Sudan. Wherever there are large gatherings of people like this, there's always the danger that diseases can break out. To protect people, the doctors and nurses of MSF are conducting measles immunizations in some of the small communities and in the refugee camps. People are still displaced and are living outside the refugee camps. They try to stay as close as possible to the main roads going in and out of Congo. They may want to make short trips in to find relatives that have been captured or kidnapped. They may just be waiting news to find out if loved ones are alive or if they're dead. There is suffering that you cannot see. You know these people have lost all that they're familiar with. They've lost the footpaths, the smell of mourning, the knowledge of where to collect firewood, the streams or the boreholes where they would go to collect water in the evening and see their friends and talk about the day's news. They don't have those simple things anymore. In some places they have been given land. You see people farming every day, even in the refugee camps, but there is a race against time. It is now the rainy season, which also means it is the planting season. So with all those families chased away from their farms, they face the risk months from now of not having enough food to eat. People are terrified to go back home, and with good reason. They've watched their friends and relatives get slaughtered, and the attacks are still ongoing, even in southern Sudan. And some simply can't go back. I met a teenager, paralyzed years ago, whose family was killed. He was carried out of the bush and across the border on the back of a neighbor's bicycle. Now he's surviving from the kindness of strangers alone. One man who I had met was waiting in line at a food distribution. He had just arrived the day before, having fled from Congo. His village was attacked and two of his children were abducted. And I remember, he said, I don't know what kind of father I am. What kind of life am I living that I can lose my two children like this? MSF was working across a broad stretch of the border area. In another district, a town called Nyori, there was another refugee camp where MSF had set up medical care. They organized a group of refugees who had worked as nurses. They served as health promoters. They spent days walking around, talking to people about health, listening to people's stories about what they'd been through, and often just offering a compassionate ear. Every day the clinic was full. There were everyday injuries that needed tending to, there were kids with malarial fevers, pregnant women, and newborn children. Before these attacks, these Congolese and Southern Sudanese people lived a simple but challenging life. They didn't have everything, but they had each other. And now, my hat goes off to people who survive there on a daily basis. You know, life in this part of the world is hard enough without something terrible like this happening. <laughs>